Welcome to the Get Fit Guys, quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Ben Greenfield, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. Believe it or not, stretching is actually quite a bit of a controversial topic among personal trainers and exercise professionals. There's a variety of opinions when it comes to the best time to stretch, which stretches are best, how long to stretch, or even whether you should be stretching at all. I hinted at some of these issues in my episode, Does Yoga Burn Calories?, which I'll link to in the show notes over at quickanddirtytips.com. In that episode, I dispelled the myth that you actually burn fat with the stretching you do in a yoga class. And in the episode, How to Get More Flexible, which I'll also link to in the show notes over at quickanddirtytips.com, you learn that traditional stretches, such as standing and reaching for your toes, really are not an ideal way to truly improve your flexibility, your range of motion, or your mobility. In today's episode, which is part one of a two-part series on stretching, you're going to learn everything else you need to know about stretching, including the top 10 stretching mistakes and also when to stretch and how to stretch. Let's start with stretching knots, which is the first mistake that stretchers make. In a recent article I wrote about mobility over at bengreenfieldfitness.com, I pointed out the fact that when you're exercising frequently, your muscle fibers can easily get cross-linked, knotted, and stuck to one another in a pattern called an adhesion. Now, think of these adhesions, or knots in your muscle, like a rope with a knot right in the middle. If you pull on both ends of that rope, what happens? Well, the knot gets tighter and more difficult to untie. This is how stretching can make things worse if you have adhesions, knots, and other tissue issues. So how do you get rid of knots? It all begins with doing soft tissue work before you launch into a stretching program or begin stretching every day. Soft tissue work includes things like foam rolling, deep tissue massage, using golf or tennis balls against tight knotted areas in your body, and finding, then eliminating, all those hard adhesed areas where knots form. Once a muscle area is free of knots, it'll be much safer for stretching. I personally used to get in my car and drive to a massage therapist every single week until I learned how to do my own therapy with a golf ball, a hard ridged foam roller, I have a love-hate relationship called a rumble roller, a series of lacrosse balls strung together called a myo rope, and a rolling pin-like device called a muscle track. Now, I only need to see a massage therapist when I've run into a big knot that I just can't fix myself, which only happens about 1% of the time. The rest of the time, I've got my own little home knot removal kit. So I'll put links to all that stuff over at quickanddirtytips.com. Stretching mistake number two is stretching with poor posture. Now, go ahead and try bending down to touch your toes. Now stop. Is your back bent or hunched over? Now, try to bend down and touch your toes again, but this time keep your back pretty straight and look slightly forward with the chin up. You can't stretch quite as far, can you? The fact is, many people do leg and arm stretches with poor posture, meaning they simply use their back or neck to strain into the position they want to get to, which results in undue stress on the spine and the vertebra and eventual back and neck pain, headaches, and muscle strains. Just like when you're lifting weights, running, swimming, or riding a bicycle, you should never be hunched over with relaxed, poor posture when you're stretching. Instead, you should be alert with a straight back, tight abs, and an activated butt. One of my favorite ways to learn this type of good stretching posture is with a book called Foundation, written by Eric Goodman. You should be able to find that at Amazon or any local bookstore. Now, mistake number three is stretching imbalances. Whether it's standing to touch the toes or lying on the back to stretch the back of the legs, it seems that stretching the hamstrings is pretty sexy these days. Everybody does it. But the problem is many people forget about the all-too-important muscles on the front of the body, like the quadriceps, and even more importantly, higher up, the pelvis muscles like the psoas and some of the other hip flexors. One of the most important muscles that becomes incredibly tight when you've been sitting for long periods of time is that psoas muscle. And psoas is spelled P-S-O-A-S if you want to go look it up. The psoas is very easy to stretch, and in just a moment, I'll tell you how. But the problem is that most people spend way too much time stretching the back of their legs and wind up with weak and noodle-like hamstrings with a very tight psoas, resulting in back pain, a shortened stride, and poor posture. 
So, how do you stretch your psoas? It's easy. Just stand up and lunge with one foot forward and one foot back. Now, bring both your arms overhead. Finally, lean away from the leg that is stretched out behind you. If you do this right, you'll feel the stretch in the front of the leg that is extended out behind you, up near your groin. Mistake number four is stretching stressed. One of the first things you'll learn when you visit a yoga class is to engage in the right type of deep diaphragmatic breathing that I teach you in my episode, How to Breathe the Right Way. This is because if you breathe in a stressed, shallow way while doing yoga or you grit your teeth while stretching, you wind up stretching a muscle that's tight and guarded. And this is just like trying to stretch a rubber band that just doesn't want to stretch or is super tight and thick. You risk straining, spraining, or tearing that rubber band. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't stretch at all when you're stressed out. And as a matter of fact, stretching is actually a great way to reduce stress. But when you actually do stretch, be sure to take deep relaxed, focused breaths through your nose and out through slightly pursed lips or out through your nose. If you find yourself breathing shallow or breathing from the chest, simply stop, close your eyes, focus on relaxing and letting all your cares go away, quit gritting your teeth, and then keep stretching. Now, mistake number five is stretching pain. And let me tell you, stretching isn't supposed to hurt. But many of us hear that one of the best things to do for a sprained ankle, a twisted knee, or a sore shoulder is to stretch it. So we grit our teeth and we stretch through that pain. Well, the fact is that light stretching can indeed improve blood flow to a muscle or joint, which can certainly assist with healing. You'd be surprised at how small of a stretch is actually necessary to induce this type of healing response. For example, Stretching the ligaments and muscles around the knee can involve something as simple as going for a light walk, a very easy bike ride, or some low-impact marching in place. It doesn't require you to get into some kind of a yogi-esque position of pulling your heel all the way up to your butt until you feel shooting pain in your quadriceps, your knee, or your leg. So remember, while it's okay to stretch an injured area, also remember not to stretch through pain. And remember that if a muscle is even moving at all, technically it's stretching. And sometimes that's all you need. Now, next week, you'll learn about stretching mistakes 6 through 10. But in the meantime, if you have more questions about these first five stretching mistakes, then leave them over at facebook.com slash getfitguy. And until next time, I'm the Get Fit Guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Go get fit.